Good morning everybody, it's been a long time since I've done Sunday School. Over the next three weeks we're going to be looking at a man named Saul. Today we're going to look at how Saul was chosen to be king. Let's watch the video now. And today I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Are you ready? Yes Father, we are. Saul was anointed as the king at a very critical moment in the history of Israel. Philistines were very powerful and they were taking away the land that God had promised Israelites. The very existence of Israel was threatened. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then, you shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. In the hill country of Judea, there was a little town called Gaibe. In that town lived a man named Kish who belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. One day, some of his donkeys got lost. He sent his son, Saul, along with a servant in search of the donkeys. This happened a few days after Samuel promised the Israelites that he would give them a king. <sighs> I am tired. Let's search for some more time. Master, forget the donkeys. Let's return back home. They must be worried thinking about us. Won't it be a shame to return empty-handed? I've heard that there is a prophet around here. Let's go and talk to him. Yes, master. Come, maybe he can help us in finding the donkeys. Hey, look, there's someone there. Let's go and ask him. Hey, hello, sir. Yes, how can I help you? Sir, we heard that there is a prophet around here. Do you know him? Oh, did you mean the prophet Samuel? Yes. He is in town. You may find him on top of this mountain. Thank you, sir. Come, let's get to the top of this mountain. Have we reached, Master? <sighs> yes, we have reached the top. Oh, there's someone over there. Let's go and ask him. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Could you please help us find Prophet Samuel? We are coming from Gaibe. I am Samuel. Did you? Did you just say that you are coming from Gaibe? Yes, we are from Gaibe. And is your name Saul? Whoa! Yes, my name is Saul. But how did you know? God, it's like you told me in my vision. Thank you, God. Master, we come in search for our donkeys. They were lost a few days back. Don't worry about the donkeys anymore. They have been found. Come with me. You can stay with me tonight. Yes, Master. Samuel had a vision about Saul the night before. And when he saw Saul, he knew that he was the chosen one by God to be the king of Israel. Saul stayed with Samuel that night and they were about to return back home the next morning. Saul? Saul, wait there. Yes, Master? Saul, 
I want to show you something. Tell your servant to go on without us. You go ahead. I'll join you in some time. What is it, master? Why did you want me to stay? Kneel down, soul. Yes, master. Saul, God has anointed you to be the king of Israel. You will save God's people from their enemies. Master, I, I don't think I'm worthy. I come from a humble family. So, what did we hear in this story? Saul was an ordinary person out looking for his lost donkeys. He met a prophet called Samuel who had been talking to his people and they were looking for a king. God had told Samuel that Saul was the person to do the job. So Samuel took Saul aside and told him that God wanted him to be king. How do you think Saul might have felt about that? I don't think he felt important enough to do such a job. I don't think he was really prepared for the task either. Being a king is a big responsibility. But God had chosen Saul, which meant that Saul was very, very important to God. Have you ever been given a job or role you didn't feel ready for? Who chose that role for you? And who helped you succeed? Why don't you have a chat with those in your household now about this? Did you talk to God at these times and listen and ask for his help and guidance and trust in what God had said? Listening to and hearing from God is something we can practice and over time it becomes easier to hear and recognise God's voice. Some of you might question whether what you are hearing is from God or just your own ideas and thoughts. As with all aspects of following God, we must have faith and trust that God wants us and does want to speak to us. On our website, you'll find some ideas on how to listen to God and also a couple of crafts. One of the crafts is a pin the tail on the donkey to remind you about the donkeys that Saul lost. But also, I've put a craft on there which is a listening pillow. It's really easy to make and it can be made out of household things. The story of Saul didn't believe, sorry, in the story, Paul didn't believe he was important enough to, to be chosen by God. He questioned what Samuel was saying. God loves each and every one of us and wants us to speak, uh, speak to us as none of us are unimportant to God. So it's up to us to listen to what God has to say. Let's finish our session with a prayer. Dear God, thank you for the story of Saul being chosen by you. Thank you that even though Saul was from the smallest family in the smallest tribe, you chose him to lead your people. Help us to be like Samuel, listening to you and living in obedience to you. Help us to see ourselves through your eyes and to trust that you want to use us too. Help us to be good listeners and examples in our homes, schools and workplace. Amen. So next week, we're going to learn a little bit more about Saul and how he became king. See you all next week, everybody. Bye for now.